meteorologist Riley Hale for your first alert. Parker's Kitchen is proud to partner with the Wounded Warrior Project to ensure that local injured veterans receive the life-changing programs and services they need. Please round up at checkout and we'll match your donation. Live from Augusta, you're watching News 12 at 6 o'clock. And we begin with weather here on News 12 at 6 o'clock, tracking some storms out there. Some parts of our area seeing some severe weather a little earlier in the afternoon, but first alert, Chief Meteorologist Riley Hale here to tell us what we can expect as we head through the night. Yeah, guys, this uh, line of storms was pretty impressive out there earlier this afternoon. It continues to move closer towards the coast for the weekend in just about 10 minutes. All right, thanks, Riley. New details just into our news during the last 15 minutes about a quadruple fatal crash out in Millen. Georgia State Patrol says it happened on the 11th, just after midnight. Troopers were called to the scene for a two-vehicle crash on Highway 67 near Gaze Hill Church Road in Jenkins County. While heading north, one of the vehicles hit the other head-on, causing it to erupt into flames. There were two adults in one of the cars, two others, and a three-year-old in the other. Shiny Sanders, Zoe Wright, Jacqueline John. Johnson, William Johnson, they all died in the scene, and the cause of that crash is still under investigation. Also tonight, we're seeing expanded emergency services here in Augusta. Piedmont Augusta just reopening their Somerville Hospital campus over there on Wrightsboro Road. The ER was shut down in December of 2020 after being used as an inpatient hospital during the pandemic. But today's opening will hopefully help shorten those long ER wait times across Georgia. New numbers say people spent an average of 2 hours 37 minutes last year waiting at an ER, up to an average of 10 minutes from 2014. A steady nationwide increase comes as hospitals face a staffing crisis. As our Sydney Hood tells us, reopening this hospital is the first step to reducing those local wait times. Services from Piedmont Augusta are expanding from downtown to Somerville. But hospital officials say you can expect the same quality of care. There is new life coming to Piedmont Augusta. It's just a new beginning for something that has existed for a long time. After four years, the doors are open at Piedmont Somerville. Reducing an emergency room uh, to the community meant that the other emergency rooms in the city uh, saw more patients. And so that just led to some overcrowding. Piedmont Augusta says they've cut their ER waiting times at their main campus in half. Last year, they say their average wait time was eight hours. Now it's down to four hours. It, it opens a gateway, you know, if somebody walks into the emergency department downtown and they see it's busy, um, that uh, it gives them an avenue to come here, which is kind of what happened in the past. Inside, there are 12 inpatient beds and 15 emergency beds. We will keep a constant look on that to see, do we need more? If, if the demand is there for it, we are prepared to take those next steps to open more beds. We really invested in the radiology department to provide that new CT scanner, to provide a new x-ray machine, new ultrasound. The end goal is to expand more services to more people. This hospital has served a lot of people who lived in the community for many, many years, and closing it meant that they had to go downtown, uh, which is two and a half miles away, but can feel like a really long distance when you know you may not when you're not feeling well it, it was an easy resource for uh, our our neighbors to access medical care quickly that's really something we wanted to uh, return to the community the doors officially open out here tomorrow morning at seven in augusta sydney hood on your side and Piedmont Augusta says there's an ambulance dedicated to the Somerville campus. It'll be there 24-7. They also say the reopening will not impact the relationship with Augusta Tech, but will strengthen it. The death of a Warrenville toddler is under investigation after reports of bird bath fell on her. The Aiken County Coroner's Office and the Aiken County Sheriff's Office say that she died at the hospital. There's no word yet on if any arrests have been made, but we'll keep you posted in this case. Another top story tonight, a former school aide at Glen Hills, now a convicted sex offender, sentenced to 10 years. Kari Rollins took a plea deal today, pleading guilty to criminal attempted child molestation. He still has two pending cases in Richmond County. Accused of sucking, licking, and kissing a child's foot last January at Urban Air Adventure Park. As Hallie Turner reports, Kari Rollins is now banned from Columbia County altogether.
Deputies arrested Kari Rollins twice in 2023 for molestation and attempted child molestation. While he was out on bond, he struck a third time. He asked to see a child's foot in a neighborhood in Columbia County. That child's mother spoke today in court. Prior to this event, my son had minimal <clears throat> sexual and anxiety issues. However, the interaction with Mr. Rollins has impacted my son even more. He does not want to be seen or approached outside of his home. Reports show this happened on May 17th, just 10 days after Rollins had been released on bond in Richmond County on seven counts of child molestation. Prior to that, he was arrested on January 14th of 2023, where he's accused of sucking, licking, and kissing a child's foot at Urban Air. Well, that was uh, very sorry, and I want to make this to uh, Judge Grady Blanchard sentenced Rollins on Wednesday to 10 years. He must register as a sex offender and he's banned from Columbia County, along with several other special conditions. In Columbia County, Hallie Turner on your side. And he still has two other pending cases. We'll let you know when those move forward. Also new tonight, a former warehouse assistant for Augusta National pleading guilty to taking millions of dollars worth of stolen master's memorabilia, including green jackets belonging to Arnold Palmer and Ben Hogan. Richard Glavinsky is accused of taking the goods to Tampa from 2009 all the way to 2022. Prosecutors say the total loss to Augusta National was more than $3 million. Glavinsky sold the merchandise to an online broker in Florida for around $5.3 million. Programs from 1934 and 1935, a clubhouse trophy, and letters and documents signed by Bobby Jones, according to court documents. The conviction is punishable by up to 10 years in federal prison. Augusta University President Brooks Keel is passing the torch. Just hours ago, he wrapped up his final State of the University address. Keel's highlighted past and present accomplishments like the largest freshman class ever with 10,000 students, the Wellstar MCG Health Partnership, the new statewide transfer program for cybersecurity degrees, and a 35% increase in academic programs since 2015. They've also seen a 32% increase in degrees awarded since 2015. Here are some of his closing remarks. And you all so much for what you do day in and day out to make this place. You have an awful lot to be proud of because of all these folks that are sitting to your left and right. Uh, Tim and I look forward to following this place from afar, watching the great progress that you make. So thank you so much. And one more time, go Jags! While talking about what's in store for the university, Keel signed off saying the future is bright for AU. And we wish him well. On the heels of some major announcements, AU just adding a new bachelor's program for data science. The university already had a master's program for that pathway, but also a bachelor's program that will help lay the groundwork for micro-credentials and online certificates. New state findings show Georgia's teacher retention is down. And about 31% of those educators are unlikely or highly unlikely to stay in education for another five years. Nick Veland in Columbia County with how they're keeping up. A day of celebration and reflection as future and first year teachers gather to take a moment to reward those in and looking to be in the teaching field. But also address that there's still work to be done to get more to become educators. Cheers. Emerging the last day of school. First year teachers are now winding down their first year in Columbia County. As they read letters, they wrote to themselves at the beginning of the year. One rookie rose above the rest in the county, being named the district's rookie of the year. The first day I knew this was exactly what I was supposed to be doing. In a field where there's shortages of employees, Michaela Jones knows that her job serves a purpose. The most rewarding thing that you can do is the best thing I've ever dedicated my time and just myself to. Trying to counter the shortage is why Columbia County continues to grow their teaching as a profession program. 471 students across the district are in these specialized classes. 29 signed their letter of intent to become teachers today. And we believe that some of the best talent rests within our school. So we're pushing that message down to our middle schools and our high schools. Jones was once a student at Columbia Middle and knew the decision was easy to come back. There's no place like home. Which is why celebrating these in the profession is so important. And the county today looks to recruit those becoming teachers and retaining the ones that they already have. So proud of what they're able to accomplish and we need to build up that profession. Uh, we should
shouldn't have a, a teaching shortage. We should really be celebrating our teachers and what they're able to accomplish for our entire community. On May 23rd, Columbia County will have a hiring fair at their complex on Riverwatch Parkway to hire all positions. We'll have more information on our website if you're interested. In Columbia County, Nick Beeler, on your side. And we know homegrown teachers are some of the best. In fact, Richmond County had a signing day earlier this month. More than 20 of their students signed with the intent to become local teachers. And we need good teachers, so thank you for that commitment. U.S. Senator John Ossoff will be at Augusta on Friday at 9.30 a.m. Well, Star MCG will be getting two new MRI suites at the hospital. Then at 11, Ossoff will also be at the airport for ribbon cutting to celebrate the new terminal upgrades there. Those upgrades come from investments from both sides of the aisle. Next on News 12 at 6 o'clock, we are heading back in time to celebrate champions out in Warren County. Well, we've had a few strong thunderstorms out there this afternoon, but starting to quiet down across the area. These storms will be pushing away the rest of tonight. Have an update on the rest of the week just after the break. Jive and Tim, brought to you by your first alert weather team. Join us right here on see that improve some, depending on the speed of the system this weekend. Next week, we're back to dry weather Monday and Tuesday, and temperatures start to get back closer to 90 next week. Almost half a century in the making, the day the Warren County 1981 girls basketball team finally got their state championship rings for winning all those years ago. Typically, booster clubs pay for state rings, but that didn't happen back then. Alyssa Lyons was there today to capture the moment. A smile as wide as the years he took. 43 went by in the blink of an eye. It's just no one batted an eye back then when the 1981 team walked away champions but left the court without a ring. Back then, we was presented with a flag with our picture on it and with all of our games for that season. I found out that they did not have rings, and it's something that really meant a lot to them. It may be no Friday night, but a season was finally made right. They were doing us what they really, really wanted, and I think they deserved it. And just to see the joy on their face right now, to see how happy they are, to see that they're appreciated still 47 years later, that's the joy for me. That makes me feel the best. The perfect ending to an imperfect season. We all quit. That was the worst overall season record we had that we were going to win. Now they can show it. it. It's taking everything in me right now to keep from crying. I mean, we talked 43 years ago, and to finally have a ring to show that we were state champions, oh my God. Because it's never too late. In Warren County, it was Lions on your side. Champions, how about that? Well deserved. I am glad they finally got the ring to prove all the hard work. Great to see them all together yeah. again. Yeah. And beautiful rings, too. Speaking of sports, game two of Augusta Christian's state championship baseball series against Cardinal Newman is on. They've been dodging showers, but sports director Dan Booth joins us live after the break. First alert radar, powered by Jim Hudson Automotive Group. I'm called wages recovered and everything else you're entitled to. Call John Foy and Associates now. On your sideline. Good evening, everyone. I'm reporting live from Cardinal Newman High School in Columbia, South Carolina, where the Augusta Christian baseball team is one win away from winning their second consecutive state championship. Now, literally, moments ago, we were just all informed that we are now going into a lightning delay. So that means that all the teams, are, both teams, are going inside for a little while to protect from any possible lightning in the area, and that's going to delay us for a little while. So that all this heads up and just everything that led to this game, which was postponed yesterday to today. We're in a situation now where we once again have a lightning delay with the Lions trying to get that win to be able to win state. Now, on the mound, when they do resume for Augusta Christian is Santiago Pacheco, who is the ace on this year's team. They feel like they have an ace in the hole because they didn't have to throw Santiago in game one. He is out here tonight. Hopefully, when the game resumes, he'll be able to get a little bit of that mojo going to give them an opportunity to win this state championship and have that bus ride right back to Augusta a lot more fun than it would be otherwise. So I'm going to have more updates throughout the night and of course a full breakdown of tonight's game on News 12 at 11 o'clock. We're having a hard time getting that game in right now. I know, I'm sure they're frustrated too. Dan, thanks.
Also tonight, connecting students to the cyber world. Right now, there are growing conversations about how to fill gaps in the tech workforce. Taylor Martin stopped by the inaugural Georgia Cyber Innovation Summit, where they're teaching the next generation about what it takes to make it in the field. For the first time, the Georgia Cyber Innovation Summit is bringing students from across the state of Georgia right here to Augusta. The thought was, how do we connect or close the distance between what's going on here in this unique Augusta uh, cyber ecosystem and what's going on in the city of Atlanta? And as AI grows, it's very important that we recognize that this is not something that's just happening organically that we're not really paying attention to, but it's something that's going to be a part of our lives for a very long time. They're helping students learn more about AI and its relationship with cybersecurity with panel discussions and fireside chats with experts in the industry. In the networking opportunities to actually meet with an executive to meet with a C-suite executive as, as a student is a huge deal. Uh, and so we know they're going to get a lot of mentoring after this event. And helping bridge gaps in the cybersecurity workforce. We hope that they gain some new relationships with individuals they may not have seen before. We hope that they gain exposure of our academic programs offered here in Augusta uh, and learn more about the Augusta and the Georgia Cyber Innovation Training Center. Uh, and then third, we really want this to be an opportunity for sharing and learning. In Augusta, Taylor Martin on your side. And they say they're hoping that summit continues to grow each year. They're in a good spot for it. They're in a great spot here in Augusta. We're back after a quick break. All right, what do we got? Looks like 64 yards to the pin. About 64 mile per hour wind. Dude, there's no wind. Hand me my 64 degree wedge. What's in with you at 64? Are you 64? Oh! <laughs> come! Justin. Hey, Brett. I think we need a jingle. What do you have in mind? I don't know yet. Well, if you're taking something, come knock on my door. Come and knock on my door. If you're 64. All right, welcome back, folks. We're actually taking a live look. This is right near Citizens Park in Aiken County, where we have a report of a couple trees down on power lines. So this may be impacting your power there around downtown Aiken. So this is uh, from our uh, reporter here that just showed up, and you can see that tree there leaning over the power line. So this is from a, a severe line of storms that passed through earlier this afternoon, just between 5 and 5.30. We had more confirmed uh, trees down in Edgefield County. So this is just the aftermath, unfortunately, of what we're dealing with in the wake of those storms. So uh, obviously, whenever you encounter a downed tree, always look to see if there's a down power line next to it. Never get close to those. Give you an idea of where we were just looking at. So just near Citizens Park, kind of on the southeast side of Aiken there. Right now, currently, those storms are moving south of Aiken County and should continue to move closer towards the coast the rest of tonight. Heading into tomorrow, we're back to sunshine and dry weather. And we'll have another live update on the weather situation ahead at the top of the hour over on 26 News. And we're back with more News 12 tonight at 11. We'll see you then. At the CBS Evening News, we focus on solutions, finding solutions to help people understand what are the right choices.